Howdy wonderful subscribers and viewers. This segment is a continuation of part 2 series for bar carriership lectures. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe by pressing the button. Else please watch and click like if it pleases you. Check with part 1 by clicking the pop-up link in the upper right corner to get a better understanding of this part series discussion. Before we start, this video segment is sponsored by Polaris Center. For your training needs, for in-depth knowledge and experience, enroll to Polaris Center. We have pool of expertise from master mariner to chief engineers. Here we cater trim and stability, passes planning, familiarization, and deck mentoring and engine mentoring courses. Polaris Center. Okay, let's proceed. Uh, in this uh, lecture, part 2 series, we will be using the same uh, ship's model utilized in part 1. And as you can see here, and it's quite uh, self-explanatory, in this uh, ship's model, there are 5 holds. And uh, as you can see here, there you go. That's uh, hold 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we will be using also the same ship's lodigator and ship's particular. So, let's proceed. To start with, let's recapitulate based from part 1 demonstration. You can see here that we have initially computed our maximum cargo to load using deadweight scale. Based on the computation, we have maximum cargo to load of 29285 metric tons. Take note, if the email for voyage instructions were SF or stowage factor is not included, you can utilize the Thomas Stowage or IMSBC. If in the case that the SF shown has a bracket for, for example, 0 0.30 to 0 0.40 cubic meter per metric tons, then get the average, which is 0 0.35 cubic meter per metric tons in this example. However, in our scenario, from the email, we have already given a stowage factor of 20 cubic foot per long tons. So, to proceed, we need first the capacity table as shown in this example. The capacity table to start the initial calculation and storage planning. You can see in this tabulated value, each hold has a corresponding values. You will find here the compartment names, location by frame numbers, capacity in cubic meter, and LCD or BCG respectively. To give you a further insight, check on these notes where it says with loading computer nomenclature, for example, H means bulk but not grain equals to solid bulk cargo. G or U equals to for grain cargoes in bulk. And V is bale for general cargoes like grains or solid bulk cargo but in bags, lugs, timber, steel products like steel coils, steel billet, plywood, etc. Thus, we will be using the grain volume reference value since the cargo type is iron ore. This is basically categorized as solid bulks. Hence, the distribution of cargo for each tank is done using a simple mathematical method based through the Hatswise process. To demonstrate it, here how it goes. The total volume of all the cargo holds, which equals to 40,633 in this example. Then, for each cargo hold, we take the volume and divide it with the total volume of all cargo holds to get the percentage ratio. And by multiplying it against the total maximum cargo to load, we shall get then the approximate cargo for each hold. This is done all throughout each hold retaining the last hold. Example, hold number 5. We use method by subtracting from total maximum load, then deduct its amount computed for the first four cargo holds. Likewise, use the same approach if you are in a vessel where there are seven holds or nine holds, then simply apply the same process in the last hold. Now, looking at our computation, if we sum up all the values computed for each hold, then we will be able to determine that the same exact amount equivalent is equal to the total maximum cargo to be loaded. However, these values are not yet final. You have to check your trim stability booklet where you will find the maximum allowable weight 
to load for each cargo holds, including alternate loading for high-density cargos. This is also termed as tank top capacity reference. And check what is the allowable limit for each tank. You have to consider the volume, weight, densities if applicable for each tank and where carrying such cargo without having any issues for stresses and stability. To put in analogy, it's like loading 1,000 kilograms of nails versus 1,000 kilograms of cotton where you could well see that the cotton has occupied a larger volume whilst the nails is much lesser. Yet the design weight for your cargo hold has reached already its maximum allowable limit. Thus, after having this confirmed, then you can work your way up to complete and adjust the values accordingly. With this in hand, we are now ready to check our computation using the loading computer. So now we can start inputting the values in the ship's load indicator. In this demonstration, I will encode the values for the cargo quantity with the computed value using the storage factor of 20 cubic feet per metric tons or equivalent of 0 0.56 cubic meter per metric tons as per loading instruction. You could see here also the conversion by default is already in place in this load indicator. Then continue inputting the remaining values for each cargo hold till cargo hold number 5. I'm now demonstrating the input. I'm just going to make it uh, faster. And so now we have completed inputting all the values for the cargo holds. As you can see here also, I have already put the remaining values for the vessel expected departure remaining on board, such as diesel oil, fuel oil, fresh water, and ballast, as per sample values we utilize in part 1 discussion, and also as shown in the image. Check as well your load line zone and density. Here in this example, I'm now changing the density and of course making sure that I have the right or correct load line zone, which is summer load line. And the density at first, I'm be utilizing 1.025. After which, we can check our trim and stability dynamics such as drops, stresses like bending moments and shear forces, including the vessel writing arm curves. To further collect data to be submitted to the master, apply the density of 1.025 to see the drop departure, then check likewise, use the density of the port if different in our given or as observed, like for example, brachis or dark water density, which in this example, we have 1.020. This will give us verification that we are well within the limits. Save this condition and rename another condition for your arrival. Again, change the values for your arrival condition by applying the estimated remaining on board upon arrival in discharging port. The estimates on arrival was based on voyage steaming time with regards to distance, speed, and consumption. Hence, apply the port density as well in discharge port to confirm the vessel is likewise within the limits. Gather all this data, print it out, and submit as required by the master, charterer, or receiver. This is an example of the reports needed as shown in the image. This discussion now completes our part 2 series lecture. Click on the next video upload for part 3. For further details, read on the description of this segment below. Thank you.